Everybody ready? <laughs> Number one, I don't hate on our brother Colin Kaepernick. Let's be very clear. I don't hate on our brother Colin Kaepernick. I wish all the best to him. He played for the San Francisco 49ers. Yes. Yes, he did. Here's the problem. We are fighting right now. I'm going to lay the base of this really quick so that we can understand. He was playing for the 49ers. It is a football team. Colin Kaepernick went from being a modern day slave to a revolutionary. Let me say this again. He went from being a modern day slave to a revolutionary. Okay, what do I mean by this? He embarrassed the league. He embarrassed the owners. He embarrassed the council at the NFL. He embarrassed the president of the United States. Why? Because he stood on principle. And in this country, being a black man, woman, or child, how the hell dare you stand on principle? How dare you stand up for something that you believe in? How dare you decide to have a voice to invoke the First Amendment, the freedom of religion, speech, press, petition, and or assembly? How dare you decide to have a level of dignity. You are supposed to be a slave. We paid you to shut up and use your body for our entertainment. You bang up your body, you sign a contract, you get a little mm -hmm. bit of money, take care of your little family, and you go and have your five to ten year, you know, uh, league contract and your tenure and you do your thing for up to ten years and then we're done with you. Then we draft someone else. That's how this goes. You are entertainment. You are a slave. You are not free. You do not apply for a freedom of speech position. That is not what a sports player is. Someone who has the right to embrace the freedom of speech. Now, I had to just lay that as a base so that we can all understand really quick. We all have to understand exactly where this is going. So Colin Kaepernick went ahead. Okay, of course it's skipping. I know it's skipping, family, because that's, you know, they, they own your brother. You can't have nearly 100,000, you know, people subscribe to your page and have less than 300 people watching live without the algorithm of Instagram or the Instagram programmers pushing down your system. So they're intentionally doing it. But anyone who can watch clearly, let me know. Let me know if you can see it clearly because my connection is great over here. So just let me know and record it. Now, really, <laughs> dang, hella skipping, huh? Uh-huh, Instagram is making something happen. Let me see something really quick. Let me try to adjust it really fast here because they're trying to cut off my feed, even though it's looking really good on my end. But I know that's what Instagram does normally. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and go right into it. Family, let me know if you can hear me clearly and if you can see me clearly. Let me know. Give me a thumbs up if you can hear me clearly or see me clearly. Let me know. All right. Dang, for most of y'all, it's really bad. Say yes if you can hear me clearly and see me clearly. If not, let me know if it's pausing, lagging, skipping, if it's grainy, let me know. Dang. Okay, family, good. So most of you so far, you can see me clearly. Do this for me. Share it in your Instagram story. Share it in your story. All right? I'm going to go right into this. Now, number one. Number one. Nike. Nike. Nike, I'm going to connect this with a number of other things, all right? But I'm going to go right into this. Make sure you have your notepads. Nike. Nike is a Greek name. Nike is the Greek name for the mythological goddess. Her name was Nike. Nike, which means victory. Okay. Nike means victory. Now, they used a check. A check was developed, which they call the swoosh. The swoosh, S-W-O-O-S-H. This design was created by a woman named Carolyn Davidson. Carolyn Davidson. She went to the University of Portland State. She was a student there. She designed the design, the logo, the swoosh, the swoosh that you are looking at. Now... Mm -hmm. It was designed to show movement. It was designed to show a level of movement, a level of action, a level of progress, upward mobility. We're doing things. We're progressing. We are evolving. Great. Just do it. Just do it. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Now, here's the point. For black people, what has been done? What has been done when it comes to black people as it pertains to these shoes? Black people as it pertains to Nikes? Black people as it pertains to Jordans? 
Okay? What has been done? What has been done? What has been done is you have spent anywhere from 40 to $150 on a pair of shoes which costs less than $20 to make. All right? I know most of you are like, okay, okay. I'm taking my time because I went so fast on that video and I wasn't able to actually delve into this, but I'm going to connect a lot of dots here. So number one, you are dealing with a company, the company's net worth, mm -hmm. just so we can understand what's going on here. Nike's brand, the entire brand of Nike internationally is a little over $75 billion in net worth. Okay, let me say that again. A little over $75 billion in their net worth, Nike. Okay, the actual brand. The founder, co-founder, pardon me, and chairman is a man by the name of Phil Knight. Phil Knight. Phil Knight. His alone, his worth, his net worth is a little over $34.7 billion. Now, I'm saying this so that we can all understand. Black boys in inner city neighborhoods murder one another over these damn shoes. Mm -hmm. Black boys in inner city neighborhoods, Compton, Watts, L.A., Long Beach, Philadelphia, Chicago, Detroit, Michigan, all throughout Florida, murder one another over a pair of goddamn shoes. Listen to me, please. I have to connect all of this mm -hmm. so that we can understand, number one, when you sit here and you see our artists, our brothers and sisters, Jumping when they see one of us accepted into the dominant society and oh Nike let us in. Oh, we made it. Oh Nike up oh, check. Up oh, check check. No, and this right here, this is a Muhammad part. This is a Muhammad part. Most honorable Elijah Muhammad part. This ain't Nike. It's most honorable Elijah Muhammad part. Let's get that straight real quick. But you see, everyone wants to celebrate because they think, oh, we made it. We are victorious. Oh, Oh man, man, we done man, oh, we ah, we in there. No, damn it, you're not. Why do we celebrate when we get accepted into their damn estuaries of power? Mm -hmm. Why? We do not need Nike. Do you realize that if all the artists today, everybody from P. Diddy to Chris Brown to everyone from the top down, if they decided to create one account, one cash app, one PayPal link, one anything that can accept mm -hmm. money, they mm -hmm. can just mm -hmm. promote and say, everyone, we need you to donate $5 to this Cash App, this account, this PayPal link, whatever. We can donate $5. We need all of you, all of our followers, to donate $5. We have a hospital that we are trying to build. We have a, I don't know, school that we're trying to build. We have a, I don't know, bus and or transportation system that we are trying to build. I don't know, we have an airport that we are trying to build. We need all of you to donate $5 to this Cash App, to this PayPal link, to this bank account. Do you know that overnight we will have mm -hmm. millions of dollars and we will be able to build that hospital? We will be able to build that bank. We will be able to build that school. We will be able to build that transportation and our bus system. We will be able to build that airport. We will be able to build that damn whatever we decided to put our money into. We have that amount of power. But no, we say, go and buy some Nikes. Really? To all of my artists, all of my brothers and sisters who are artists, I know many of you personally, and I'm not going to bash any one of you, not at all, whatsoever. I completely love and appreciate you for what you do. However, we must organize our thinking and understand that when this enemy applauds you, it is not for your benefit. They do not applaud you when it is for your benefit. Here is the point. Nike went ahead and jumped on the momentum of the black and brown people's love. They jumped on the momentum of the black and brown people's love. Once again, remember this. Love. They jumped on our love, our emotion, our heart for Colin Kaepernick and Serena Williams. They utilize Colin Kaepernick and Serena Williams and our love for them both and our appreciation for them both. Terrence Dunn, uh, thank you very much for your support via Cash App, sir. Thank you. They utilize our emotion. They utilize our movement or our charisma, our passion and our love for what Colin Kaepernick was able to do and for what Serena has been doing. And they said, hmm, well, we've lost 
lots of money from black and brown people due to Colin Kaepernick boycotting the NFL. And we've contracted with the NFL, talking about Nike. And we've contracted with those jerseys. And we've contracted with those shoes. And those socks. Uh, and those helmets. And those... Everything, pretty much, those bottles, those everything that they have, pretty much, we have our check on it, our swoosh on it. We've contracted with them, so damn it, Colin Kaepernick and his kneeling has incessantly lessened our sales, even though we didn't report them too much, but it has lessened their sales over the last two years. How can we do this? How can we regain the trust of the masses of people? How can we gain the masses of black and brown people how can we tap into that 1.2 to 1.3 trillion dollars of spending power that they have every year and even though they spend it more on alcohol and marijuana and cigarettes and every goddamn thing else that has nothing to do with their overall progress as a human reality they spend all this money on everything else but how can we tap into that money hmm play on their emotions let colin kaepernick do what he does Matter of fact, let's wait until after the Super Bowl because we need to make our money during the Super Bowl. Let's wait until after that. Let it die down. Let's wait until after President Donald Trump makes his statement about Colin Kaepernick. Let's wait until after all of this. And therefore, we're going to wait until the right time, just right. And then we're going to jump on the wave of black people and their love for Venus and Serena and for Colin Kaepernick. And that is when we will release what we need to release in order to jump right into that area. This is a very wicked system. Always remember this. The enemy does not do anything to benefit you. He does not do anything to benefit his opposition. Do you really think the enemy will give Colin Kaepernick and Serena Williams the ability to become free, to make their own brand, to make their own everything? Don't you think that the enemy was thinking, the NFL was thinking, Nike was thinking, well, damn, if Colin Kaepernick keeps moving the way he's moving, if Serena Williams keeps moving the way she's moving, they're going to come up with a bright idea to create their own brand, to create their own banks, their own everything. Serena's going to go back to Compton and pretty much run for mayor, possibly. She's going to run for some level of positioning or she's just going to influence the city. And come with all the artists and say, I need to rebuild my city. Colin Kaepernick's going to go back to his city and say, I need to rebuild my city. I'm going to create my own brand. Maybe I'm going to go and meet up with Master P and go into the Arena Football League and become the face of the Arena Football League with a black owner. Why don't I do that? Colin Kaepernick should become the owner or the face of the Arena Football League over a black owner. Wouldn't we support that? Wouldn't we run away from all of the teams, all of the major stadiums and go to the Arena Football League and put our 1.2 to 1.3 trillion dollars of spending power into that? Don't you want to be free? Don't you want to be free? I do. I personally do. I in no way. I in no way want to be a part of the system. And for some reason, many of us are a little too afraid to leave this system. So Nike comes a call and they said, damn it, let's jump on this momentum right now before they go free. So let's give them an offer that they can't refuse. Mm. Make him think he can use the money for whatever he wants to use it for. Sure, let him, let him do whatever. And guess what? For any of you right now who are saying, but Nike's sales are down. Nike's sales are down. Well, reason the, it's, it's down right now. Matter of fact, they, they are... Uh, they're plummeting in the stocks right now. No, 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 no. Let me make something very clear to you. White people being angry about Nike sponsoring Colin Kaepernick in no way is going to bring the sales down for a long period of time. They know that some white people are going to be angry about it. But white people are not the number one group of people sponsoring or investing in sportswear. They are not the number one people buying the tickets to sports events. They are not the number one group of people spending money on pay-per-view. They are not the one, number one group of people putting their children into football camps. These are not the number one group of people. Black people are. We are the 10th largest economic base of people on the planet. We are a nation of 40 to 50 million within the United States, 2,000 by 3,000 continental United mm -hmm. States. We have more money than the majority of countries on this earth with the exception of nine. So they saw the economic, financial, powerful move. They don't give a damn about a couple of white folks not buying whatever. They don't care. Go burn it. You already bought it, dummy. Bye. Why do I care about a pair of shoes you already gave me the money for anyway? Boom. 
You bought them, go burn them. Great. All these black folks, however, they're going to come mm-hmm. and they're going to spend enough money to make up for all the losses that we made in one day. We, we had losses for one day, 24 hours. Great. But guess what? It's going to skyrocket and swoosh back up. Why? Why? Why is the symbol for Nike a check? A check? Why? Because they got us niggas in check. That's why. And you damn right I said it. Niggas is in check. Mm-hmm. Why? Why? That's my point. Many of us, I watched my homeboys killing each other over a pair of goddamn shoes. And here's the other point. Here's the other point. Oh, it's lagging now, huh? Uh huh. It's lagging again. It's lagging. Okay. See, normally when I get a little loud and when I start, uh, you know, going into the Farrakhan mode, having that level of Farrakhan consciousness. Farrakhan Consciousness, if you have not gotten my DVD, Farrakhan Consciousness, I recommend you DM me so that you can get your copy of that. But uh, I'm going to say this, next point, because there are a number of things that I have to cover within this small period of time. So I'm going to say it right now. Okay, next point. Serena Williams. Serena Williams, okay. Serena Williams. Just... Beat her sister Venus, right? Now, oh, and yes, sister, uh, yes, yes. I'm going to go into the banking system. Oh, I'm going to the banking system. Don't get it twisted. Don't get it twisted. It's not lagging on your sister. Okay, good. So let me go ahead and keep going. Serena Williams defeated her sister Venus, and I believe it was the U.S. Open. I believe, I believe, I believe. However, 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 somebody black won. So we don't care. Great. Boom. It don't matter. Somebody won. Good. Somebody black won. Good. Serena won. They made her the face of Nike. Why would they do such a thing? Why would they put up a billboard that says girls from Compton don't play tennis? They own it. Do you think they give a damn about Compton, California? Do you think they give a damn about bringing businesses to Compton, California? Do you think they give a damn about the Bloods and the Crips in Compton, California? Do you think they give a damn about anything going on within Compton, California whatsoever? Do you think they care at all? At all, at all, at all. No, they do not. It is money. It is a business marketing scheme, a marketing ploy, a marketing strategy, whatever you want to call it. But they don't give a damn about coming down to Compton. I bet you not one of those damn organizers and or organizational leaders and or executives ever went down into Compton. They never went downtown. They never went uptown. They never went into Richland Farms. They never went into any part of Compton to say any damn thing because they don't give a damn about Compton. Really? All right, next point. Money is the goal here. Money. And these shoes, these shoes that many of our brothers and sisters have literally spent money for. And let me say this really quick. To all of the mothers, to all of the mothers who... Uh Uh-huh.